let us now continue with the, the midpoint formula. So the midpoint formula given here is just a very simple generalization of the familiar midpoint formula we know uh, for R2. <clears throat> okay, so the midpoint M between two points P and Q is uh, given by the following formula. So uh, for example, the x-coordinate of uh, the midpoint M is given by the sum of the x-coordinates of P and Q divided by 2. So a very similar formula holds for Y and Z. So let's see this in action. So for example, if you want to find the midpoint between P and Q, you just uh, use the following formula. Okay, so the midpoint uh for the x coordinate is just 2 given by this x coordinate plus negative 1 given by this coordinate divided by 2 so similarly y is equal to 1 plus 2 divided by 2 and the z coordinate is 3 plus negative 4 divided by 2 so this simplifies to so this is 2 minus 1 so 1 half and 3 halves comma negative 1 half okay, so the midpoint between P and Q is given by this so now let us recall the distance formula for R3 so again this is just a very simple and straightforward generalization of the familiar distance formula in R2. So the, the distance between two points P and Q in R3 is given by the square root of the sum of the squares of the difference between the corresponding coordinates of P and Q. Okay? So actually if, if we ignore this last term. We just recover the usual distance formula for R2. So let's see this in action. So for example, if we, find, we want to find the distance between uh, P, point P with coordinates 2, 1, 3, and point Q with coordinates negative 1, 2, and negative 4. So we just plug these numbers in this formula. So the distance between these two points is square root of 2 minus negative 1. So we squared that term plus 1 minus 2 squared plus 3 minus negative 4. So squared to that evaluate to, so this is 2 minus, so this is 3 squared, 9. Uh, negative 1 squared 1 and uh, this is 7 okay, 7 squared 49 so the distance between them is square root of 59 and so another example if you want to find the distance and midpoint of the line segment connecting the following points so recall that the distance or so the distance between two points connect, connecting the line segment is just the straightforward um, distance between these two points. Okay, so if we apply the distance formula for these two points, we find that B is equal to this square root of 36 plus 4 plus 9. And uh, that evaluates to 49. Okay, so that should be equal to 7. The midpoint uh, of the line segment should be the midpoint of these endpoints. Okay, so we just apply the midpoint formula for this and this. Okay, so for the x coordinate that's 6 plus 0 divided by 2 for the y coordinate that should be negative 1 plus negative 3 divided by 2 
So the z coordinate that should be 0 plus 3 divided by 2. So that simplifies to 3, negative 2, 3 halves. And now let us review what a sphere in R3 is. So a sphere is, uh, by definition, a locus of points in R3 equidistant from a point uh, C with coordinates H, K, L, and uh, that has a constant distance, okay? So we have this uh, keyword equidistant here. So that means the, or that means th those locus of points are e equidistant to this cent to this C, which we call the center, and that constant distance is uh, what we call the radius. Okay, so in this definition, this is given by R. Okay, so that means the distance of any point x, y, and z in the locus uh, of a locus of points of a sphere is given by this equation. Okay, so r is the distance of uh, any point x, y, z to h, k, l. Okay, so by the distance formula, r should be equal to this. Okay, so this is true if and only if. This is also true. Okay, so just we just square both sides. So for example, let us sketch this sphere. So what does this look like? So if you look at our general equation, actually we call this the standard standard equation. Okay, our sphere here is centered at 0, 0, 0 and has a radius of 3 because 9 is equal to 3 squared. Okay, so let us demonstrate how to do this. Okay, so I have prepared a coordinate axis here. So if you want to draw a sphere, you may want to look at its trace first or its projection or its cross section in the xy plane so in our equation let us set z equal to 0 to get its projection in the xy plane so we get x squared plus y squared equal to 9 so that is just a circle in the xy plane centered at 0 0 with radius 3 Try to draw that circle. Let's just imagine this is a perfect circle in the xy plane. It looks something like this. Okay, if we project our sphere in the xz plane, we, we just set y equal to 0, we get x squared plus z squared equal to 9, which again is just a circle of radius, uh, of radius 3. So centered in the origin again. So that is uh, its projection in the xz plane. So it should look something like this. Again, let us imagine that this is a perfect circle. Okay. So next, <coughs> let us project our sphere in the y z plane so we set x equal to 0 we get y squared plus z squared equal to 9 which is just a circle of radius 3 again in the y z plane so this should look like y z okay let's use a different color so this one does not work So uh, your circle should look like this, okay? Uh, actually, this is a trivial example. 
because uh, this is centered at the origin, but of course not every circle is centered at the origin. Okay, so, but the process for a translated sphere is the same. So we leave it as an exercise for you to try. Okay, so another example, let us find the equation of a sphere whose center is 241 that passes through the point 111. Okay, so recall that in our standard equation, we only need the radius and the coordinates of the center of the sphere. So we already have the coordinates of the center, but we do not have the radius of our sphere. We do not have a radius. So how do we determine the radius of our sphere? So recall that the distance of any point to the center will give you the radius. Okay, so we just need to find the distance of the center in this uh, point. And so that should give you the radius of uh, our sphere. So plugging these coordinates in the distance formula, we get r equal to 2. Okay, so we already have the coordinates of the center and uh, the radius of our sphere. Therefore, the equation of our sphere should be equal to this. x minus 2 squared plus y minus 4 squared plus z minus 1 squared equal to radius squared, which is 4. So another example. Let us find the equation of the sphere whose endpoints of uh, a diameter are P and Q. So let us recall that uh, diameter, uh, the diameter divided by 2 will always give you the radius. Okay, so therefore, we can always use the midpoint formula to find the center. Okay, so if P and Q are the endpoints of the diameter of our sphere, then midway Midway P and Q, you find the center of the sphere. Therefore, if we apply the midpoint formula uh, to P and Q, so that's 1 plus negative 3 divided by 2, 0 plus 2 divided by 2, 3 plus 1 divided by 2. So that simplifies to negative 1 comma 1 comma 2 so this is our center now the radius can be found by the distance of the center to any of the endpoint given above okay so p and q are always points in the sphere so the distance of the distance between p and c should give you the radius of our sphere so if r is the radius of our circle, then r should be equal to the distance between p and c. Okay, so p and c. Okay, so that simplifies to square root of 6. So if this is c and this is r, then r squared should be equal to 6. So we have 6 here on the left-hand side of our equation. That should be equal to x minus this x coordinate, y minus this y coordinate, z minus this um, z coordinate. Okay, this, this simplifies to this. Okay, so these two equations are equal. So sometimes we may have a general uh, quadratic equation in x, y, and z. And it may be, and it may turn out to be a sphere. Okay, so for example, we have this. 
quadratic equation in three variables, uh, we are being asked to, to, to work out this equation and turn it into a sphere in standard form. Okay, so a sphere in standard form is of this form. And so to do this, to, to convert this equation to its standard form, we may want to add um, additional terms or we may want to complete the squares. Okay, so for example, this, these terms here, let us isolate them and transform post negative transpose 34 to the other to the right hand side okay and let us group like terms together so like so so these are the x terms y terms j term now let us add the necessary constants to complete the following squares okay so i hope you remember how to complete your squares so we added 25, 9, and 9 both to the both sides of the equation. So this term simplifies to x plus 5 quantity squared. This term simplifies to y minus 2, 3 quantity squared. And this term simplifies to x plus 3 quantity squared. Okay, and this reduces to 9. Okay which is equal to 3 squared therefore the center of the center of this uh, sphere is equal to negative 5 3 and negative 3 from the standard equation with radius equal to 3 okay, so these are the following exercises that you may want to try so that's all for today's discussion class.